assalamu alaikum students i am your instructor mubashir ali khan with the course title comedy of manners and we are discussing uh, the school for scandal and in this lecture we are going to discuss and we are going to analyze uh, scene 2 uh, in act 1 of the play and our course code is engl uh, 3124 uh, so we will be analyzing Uh, scene two in Act one, and we will have the critical appreciation of uh, Act one as well in this lecture. Uh, and over here is the index of our this lecture. First of all, uh, we will be discussing Act one and Scene two, uh, then School uh, of Scandal, uh, the summary of the Scene two in Act. and uh, we will be analyzing uh, and we will have the critical appreciation of uh, scene 2 in act 1 then uh, we will talk about uh, anti semitic overtones uh, then we will have the analysis of the complete act uh, and then we will have the reference list uh, in this lecture uh, so the scene 2 of the play begins Uh, with a soliloquy and uh, a soliloquy is defined as a speech in a play in which a character uh, who is alone on the stage speaks uh, his or her thoughts individually uh, the and, and the act of speaking thoughts in this way so it is sometimes uh, called a monologue as well uh, so the scene too begins with a soliloquy uh, Uh, spoken by Sir Peter about his wife's spending habits. Rowley, at the same time, arrives, and uh, the two talks. Uh, <coughs> these two persons uh, talk about Maria, discussing how she rejected Joseph and Sam, and she seems to like Charles. Uh, Rowley then uh, defends Charles and. Uh, he then tells Sir Peter that Sir Oliver arrived from uh, the east. Uh, indeed, Sir Peter uh, fears that Sir Oliver will make fun of him for getting married. But he is excited to see a friend whom uh, he lost uh, 16 years ago. in fact this inquisitiveness to meet uh, meet his friend uh, leads towards uh, their uh, next meeting with each other and the peter uh, complains of uh, lady tizel's uh, spent safe way rawle the former steward of of the success late father arrives and uh, in this scene we see that the peter then gives him an earful uh, on on the subject uh, he also complains that maria has refused joseph whom he calls a model uh, for the young man of of the age and seems uh, attached to charles in this concern uh, whom he denounces as a cruelly gate Uh, a man below the ethical and moral standards rawley defends charles and then announces that sir oliver has just arrived from uh, from the east in days and <coughs> so far as uh, while discussing the uh, act 1 scene 2 uh, the title is concerned uh, to the popularity of uh, Uh, malicious scandal and gossip in 18th century london upper class uh, saloon so uh, it was a trend at at that time to uh, to gossip with the each other uh, about different rumors and uh, propaganda of life these saloons were highly cultured and uh, in solar environments in which wit and complex manners were Uh, learn as if taught in a school so we can say that these saloons actually uh, worked uh, just like a school where 
uh, uh, such sort of complex mannerism was uh, learned uh, uh, and it was uh, uh, learned how to live in a society like 18th century uh, middle class audiences of Sheridan's time uh, delighted in comic play a place called comedies of manners so comedies of comedies of manners were not only used to uh, to show the lampoon or to show the uh, absurdities and footies of the upper class but right at the moment the objective of uh, uh, of creating the comedy of manners by the different writers uh, uh, to amuse uh, ultimately uh, to amuse the middle class exposing the uh, follies uh, of uh, uh, upper and self uh, indulgent class uh, a portrait in uh, such place such as the school of uh, school for scandal the upper classes had nothing better to do with their time uh, with their uh, time uh, of existence than to uh, tear down repetitions engage in a minor trivial and uh, superficial pursuit and score points with each other uh, remaining in the days of competition with witty banter at the ex uh, expense of the truth so we see uh, a uh, race of competition among the different characters uh, living in the 18th century in order to uh, uh, mark their uh, their hollow position in in the contemporary society uh, so scene two uh, is read at the house of peter trinzel uh, and lady trinzel uh, who have been uh, identified in act one scene one uh, as to neighbors of Lady Sunilva. Uh, the scene begins, uh, as we know, with a soliloquy, uh, a speech in which a character speaks thought aloud uh, by Sir Peter. And, uh, and however, uh, uh, if Sir Peter complains of his lamentable position as a new married aging former bachelor sir peter exclaims right at the moment rhetorically when an old bachelor marries a young wife that is uh, a wife uh, in fact what is uh, he to expect after six months of marriage to a wife raised in in the country sir peter feels that he is he uh, is the happiest of men uh, yet also the most miserable dog at the same time the two spouses quarrel habitually uh, over money and expenses uh, so it is a uh, we can say uh, a stride on the uh, domestic and uh, we can say the practical uh, environment of the 18th century however sir peter claims uh, that he has been careful to choose uh, a bride uh, who never knew luxury. Sir Peter admits uh, that he loves his bride, but he strangely uh, insists uh, that he will never be weak enough to, uh, to admit it. Uh, the entrance of Raoulet triggers uh, the action of uh, this comparatively brief scene. Because the former steward of, uh, of the circus uh, bat bachelor father, uh, Raoul enjoys a confidential and trusted position with Sir Peter. Uh, with Sir Peter, uh, 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 when Sir Peter actually confesses to uh, being uh, waxed and, or, or uh, we can say, uh, exquited Raoul ventures. To defend Charles Surface and twice an optimistic view about the possibilities of his reformation. Uh, more practically, uh, Raoul imparts that Sir Oliver Surface, the brother, uh, the brother's uncle, has now in fact arrived in London. Delighted at uh, at the unexpected uh, prospect of the reunion uh, with his old friend, Sir Peter cautions Raoulet that Sir Oliver should learn 
nothing about the friction between uh, friction uh, nothing about the uh, friction between a uh, Peter and and his, and his wife otherwise an Oliver's teasing will be unbearable uh, at the end of the uh, scene Sir Peter returns to the subject of uh, his marriage and and uh, the subject of marriage is uh, uh, had been uh, a wide range topic for the discussion in the uh, in the contemporary society and uh, then uh, sir peter uh, intones rawle saying that ah master rawle when an old bachelor marries a young wife he deserves no the crime carries the punishment along with it so Sheridan has exposed uh, the hypocrisies and uh, cunning attitude and, and disgust behavior of uh, 18th century uh, uh, in sense of practical and domestic uh, not we cannot say only the criticism but in a hysterical form uh, that all these absurdities and uh, police of the upper class uh, direct the audience uh, to uh, think profoundly about the uh, prevailing aspects of the uh, 18th century society that that in fact had be, had become the subject for the discussion for many writers at the same time. And now we are going to discuss the critical appreciation of the accuracy too uh, as a whole and in this concern uh, the critic Richard Taylor, uh, who suggested in Sheridan, Sheridan studies that the place anti semitism uh, may present a problem for audience. Uh, and when we talk about uh, we talk about the critical appreci appreciation, Taylor asserts some uh, critics suggest uh, that uh, so far as the language is concerned in the Act one, or, or uh, in the play, uh, the subject matter uh, not topical. When Peter Wood was uh, interviewed about his 1994 production of School for Scandal, uh, he expressed uh, the opinion that the public might be developing a new appreciation for the rhythm and tone of language. Uh, such as Sheridan and while uh, it is true that the comedy of manners motive uh, motive might be of uh, less interest to 20th century audience because the play represent uh, the upper class uh, or, or the representation of 18th century uh, environment it is uh, quite certain that with uh, with the uh, different journalism, uh, uh, journalistic point of view, uh, or with different sort of journalism, and especially hot topic on the television and in a mainstream newspaper, the public's interest is uh, in gossip. That uh, gossiping ha uh, ha has now become uh, a hot topic uh, for. For, for the modern age that we see nowadays uh, through the mainstream uh, media or in a play that satirizes gossip should be uh, appeared and so uh, it marks the critical appreciation it marks in fact the uh, we can say the, the position of this play in the more even in the modern society although it represents the 18th century environment but if Language and topic do not limit the play's reception. What other reasons uh, then might? Uh, one possibility is that uh, the anti uh, and the anti semitism uh, uh, that runs through school for scandal uh, produces uh, uh, different discomfort, uh, a sort of discomfort uh, in contemporary audience. 
and no amount of uh, directorial cutting uh, easily eliminate it. Uh, so being a true and the faithful representative of uh, his age, Sheridan has exposed uh, all, all the aspects of uh, uh, society, vices and virtue, not in fact the virtue, but vices and the shortcomings, moral and ethical weaknesses of 18th century society in a way that now uh, it, it has become quite significant in the uh, modern age, uh, so that's why uh, uh, the play is being read uh, uh, in the modern age, uh, which is a uh, clear evidence of uh, uh, its uh, significance in the domain of English uh, literature, uh, and uh, at the same time, uh, its man the manipulation of the different ideas uh, that has been presented by the writer in the play uh, still exist uh, in our modern society. Uh, in fact, anti-Semitism was a part of 18th century English life uh, and uh, an act that would have permitted Jews to become naturalized citizens uh, and was uh, immediately uh, repealed when anti-Semitic the treat mobs loudly protested to the law. When Moses uh, is introduced in Act, uh, uh, coming Act, Act C of the School of, of a Scandal, uh, his name is uh, refaced with the character, descriptor, or nest, since it was Moses. Uh, and anti Semitism was about. Uh, about of 18th century English life, uh, an act that would have permitted Jews uh, to become naturalized citizens, uh, was uh, repealed immediately when anti uh, Semitic satiric mobs loudly protested the law. And uh, the same is true for the overly used friend or friendly if description of uh, uh, of a character must note his friendliness when the point is made uh, that most moneylenders are not their blind uh, friends. Historically, Jews have been identified with uh, uh, with uh, money lending and uh, and we can say the uh, uh, hypocrisies and in school. For scandal, Sheridan also identifies Jews as dishonest and unfriendly. Uh, because whatever he saw right at the uh, moment, uh, uh, he depicted in the finest way, uh, proven by the fact that uh, uh, most is in the uh, in a uh, will have will have the the exact example for this uh, discussion. Sheridan also identifies Jews. Uh, not only dishonest and unfriendly, but uh, uh, but a, a, a specific class manipulating the different uh, misunderstandings and different wrong uh, uh, things to believe in the contemporary society. So in school for scandal, uh, uh, to be uh, money lender is to, uh, to be a cheater or Oliver. Uh, is told that to be successful and victorious or to be a uh, 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 um, 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 pure man in the society or to be to be a man uh, acknowledged by the society uh, in his disguise he must uh, demand 50 percent interest and if the subject seems especially desperate then 100% interest would be appropriate for this uh, in this concern. Thus, uh, to be a successful money lender, one must also be a, be greedy, uh, self-centered, uh, unfeeling, and unsympathetic. In Sheridan's play, Jews must even look different uh, from other men. Sir Oliver asks. Uh, 
uh, that if he shall be able to pass uh, for a Jew, uh, the response is that this money lender is to a uh, broker, a uh, step up socially, and since uh, he is also a Christian or Oliver's uh, appearance will be satisfactory. So, uh, it will be obvious to say that Sheridan has uh, exposed uh, the hypocrisy and uh, uh, dual thinking of, of the Jews, uh, a specific class related to the religion manipulating uh, those strategies uh, only in their own benefit and uh, and for their self center to achieve their self center objectives in the contemporary society and it it was uh, uh, quite obvious and it was quite uh, 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 visible in the uh, 18th century in uh, and so far as the anti semitic uh, overtones are concerned uh, we see that in England uh, and other European countries in the late Middle Ages, laws required Jews to wear identifying patches, not unlike the yellow stars uh, in Hitler's Germany con uh, con uh, centuries later. Uh, during outbreaks of uh, plague, uh, Christians blamed Jews for spreading the disease. England decided to solve the Jew, uh, Jewish problem uh, once and for all by expelling Jews uh, in uh, 1290. Uh, beginning in 1655, England under Oliver Cromwell uh, then uh, readmitted Jews in 1753. Parliament approved legislation uh, granting the naturalization of uh, uh, Jewish immigrants. However, anti Semiticism uh, remained strong in the country. The school for scandal, uh, which uh, uh, debuted in 1777, contains passages that reflect the attitude of uh, many Englishmen toward Jews. So, several of these passages describe the Jewish moneylender uh, that uh, we will uh, see uh, in the in the play Moses as uh, the honest uh, uh, a person uh, or character of uh, from uh, chosen uh, by the writer. Honest Moses and very honest fellow implying that his honesty is rare among Jews. Uh, in the first uh, uh, scene, Raoul refers to Moses as a, a friendly Jew, uh, implying that most other uh, Jews are unfriendly. Later in the same scenes, uh, Sir. Uh, so Oliver, uh, in, in preparing for his role as uh, Mr. Premier, tells uh, that he will ask 8 to 10 percent in interest if Charles asks him for a loan. Here is the uh, dialogue in that scene, clearly implying that uh, Jewish money lenders are. Uh, a self-centered, a, a self-centered business, uh, businessman, in fact, uh, uh, existing in the society, and they have uh, a single objective uh, to earn uh, or uh, to hold uh, all the means of production or or, or to earn money, uh, even uh, through the manipulation of materialism or or using the strategies uh, of Macwilly and that has been discussed uh, in these two acts uh, of, of, the, of the play by Sheridan. Now we are going to analyze Act 1, Scene 2 uh, and uh, beginning with the prologue or the uh, uh, Soliki was fairly a common uh, place at the time of Sheridan's writing. 
uh, these prologues are used to uh, uh, direct uh, address the audience and set up some of the themes or issues of the play and sometimes these prologues are not even written by the playwright much like the a forward of a book uh, from the uh, beginning of the play proper characters uh, names are important for understanding characters personalities and shadian sense of humor and irony uh, in the first scene lady smear will talk to snack openly about their plot uh, about their uh, scheme to spread a nasty false rumor about charles sir Uh, without any hesitation and without any fear of being caught and uh, without any uh, fear of uh, uh, being the victim of uh, uh, this scheming and Lady Snearwell's personal reason for enjoying uh, creating scandal. Lady Snearwell's name combines his social status, lady, with her major character uh, trait of judging others. near well snake's name is uh, slightly more metaphorical now uh, evoking ideas of uh, uh, sneakiness and this trait is why lady snake will choose him to do her uh, wedding ironically uh, and it is also the character trait that allows to make to uh, reveal lady snake wells plot in the and that what she uh, has planned about <coughs> charles surfaces uh, and not in, uh, in order to harm him but uh, in order to uh, enjoy uh, the situation that will happen after uh, after the revelation of truth and the realistic aspects uh, so uh, richard brinsley uh, uh, has use these uh, sort of uh, writing uh, style uh, or for the law or sort of like in order to uh, communicate the things in a direct way with the audience without any medium uh, using any medium or uh, without any uh, hurdle and uh, for this uh, writing characteristics uh, he is supposed to be Uh, an eminent uh, playwright uh, who, uh, who is uh, acknowledged uh, hugely in the domain of english literature and his uh, his work uh, in fact signifies his literary position among his uh, uh, contemporaries uh, and lady snearwell's forwardness and honesty with snake might be surprising in a comedy of manners uh, for example she says directly wounded myself in the early part of my life by a, by a harsh tongue of slander i confess that i have since known no player equal to uh, equal to this deducing others to level of my on in the presentation uh and act 1 introduces many of the important characters and relationships uh, or among them when maria is introduced there is the immediate uh, contrast between her own manner and uh, and beliefs and those of uh, rest of the characters In her second line of the play, she explains why she fled from conversation with Benjamin Blackbite, saying his conversation is uh, teasing for her. One of the major issues raised in uh, in Act One, uh, in both scenes of the Act One, when we have a general uh, overview of the discussion. Uh, is the relation uh, between uh, uh, between uh, between meaning that what uh, gossip is concerned with and what is in fact uh, uh, the word as we 
we had already discussed this uh, in our previous lecture and in this way uh, Sheridan is going to uh, dis, uh, dis, in, uh, dis distinguish between the two terms uh, by saying that these two uh, not uh, only have the different meanings but the manipulation in the play is quite, uh, quite different uh, and it, it is uh, up to readers that how they are going to uh, to have uh, to have the perception about uh, about the manipulation of these two uh, terms in the play, uh, and so far as Lady Snare is the major character of the play is concerned, uh, she always sees herself as standing above above the uh, above the gossips uh, who gossip uh, for fun and to show off rather than to manipulate the relationship in their own favor. In fact, she does not find it hard to hear about Charles' financial position because she uh, she doesn't uh, does not care about Charles' reputation, only about the effect uh, that uh, the second uh, that the scandal surrounding him will have on Maria's love for him. Indeed, if Charles is financially uh, declined uh, and abandoned by his uncle and Maria. Uh, he will need to marry a wealthy woman like uh, like Smearville to avoid going to jail and uh, and in this way uh, she in fact is going to uh, achieve her, her, her self centered objectives so her uh, her objective behind the manipulation of uh, the propaganda of life is not only uh, uh, to get Fun, uh, but uh, she also wants uh, that the relationship between uh, Charles and uh, uh, and Faria is going to be uh, harmed in this way. So that's why uh, she uh, she talks in, in a harsh tone uh, regarding uh, the evidences or regarding the prediction. Uh, uh, that uh, she perceives according to her own mental uh, state of mind. Uh, so, concluding the analysis of Act One, uh, we see that the second scene of Act One a great deal briefer, uh, briefer than than the first is driven uh, by both character and plot. Uh, the speaking names of uh, of the teasers. Uh, especially informative since multiple meanings are possible from uh, from their uh, derivation. First uh, is the 18th century denotation of the verb tease, meaning to irritate or uh, grate upon. Uh, second, the noun tease refers uh, to a plant with brick uh, with uh, uh, brickly leaves. Finally, the verb tease we see seems to have had the connotation of cox. Uh, or uh, casual. The scene introduces Sir Peter Trizels, one of one of the uh, play's major characters, as well as his household. In particular, uh, the character of uh, his newly wedded wife. Uh, it should be noted that Sir Peter is also closely linked with some of uh, of the play's other important character for example he serves as maria's guardian also in the past he has been closely uh, connected uh, to the uh, brothers joseph and charles surface by virtue of his friendship you know, with their late father and their uncle sir oliver surface so uh, it, it it shows uh, uh, his profound connection with uh, these uh, various characters. Sir Peter's dialogue with Raoulet, uh, Raoulet uh, the steward uh, formerly employed by the Swiss brothers, uh, deceased father raises a question that and that will persist throughout the play. Will Charles uh, redeem himself uh, through reformation? or will Joseph win out as the dominant 
dominant estimable uh, sibling he now appears to be so it is it's uh, it's a question left over uh, uh, to have a, a comprehensive answer then the dialogue between the two men also confirms the foreshadowing in scene one of sir oliver oliver's returns to britain for the east indies and uh, and as he reinforces the audience in impression that sir oliver will uh, play a major role in in the comedy of manners sir oliver's return from the east indies also uh, reflects the fascination with exotic places uh, uh, that aristocrats have lived during uh, this time uh, the, the which he which he had mention of the east indies uh, in with British interest both financial and cultural abroad those willing uh, and able to, uh, to finance and clip uh, ship trading uh, in tea and uh, we, we see that uh, Lane, uh, China tea uh, sets uh, that serve as uh, as blast or weight that improves a ship's stability on the sea. Uh, in returning ships, look risks to make massive gains. These, uh, those who travel uh, uh, to East uh, Indies uh, were highly sought as, as guest as uh, the best London salon uh, that, that were the hub of manipulating the a gossip and lies about different characters uh, and to read their adventures. Uh, scene 2 in fact offers in Act 1 uh, a counterweight in tone to the hysterical, predominantly negative vibration of scene 1. Uh, Sir Peter offers eccentric uh, uh, eccentricity uh, com and complaints about uh, Lady Teaser. Uh, and Lady Teaser, however, it is clear that uh, Sir Peter embodies uh, a more serious, responsible social uh, press, uh, presence than Lady Snearwell has in the society. And uh, her, uh, uh, her uh, scandal uh, interest uh, and her Keen interest by presenting different scandals about the characters, and Sir Peter knows about uh, that uh, uh, very well. And Sir Peter is forceful antagonist of uh, the gossip and their cynical uh, attitude towards people's uh, motive and reputation. The end of the scene offers uh, an amusing parallel to the uh, to the beginning, uh, the hyperbole. Uh, the hyperbole or uh, uh, exaggerated metaphor of marriage as a crime matches of Peter's earlier expression in his first speech when he uses the phrase committed wet law. Uh, so, the, the second scene of Act 1 uh, deals uh, with the uh, driven force. Uh, by by two elements, and the one is character, and the second one is uh, plot. So these two uh, driven force, uh, forces drive the uh, uh, play uh, ahead, uh, play an important role in the uh, second scene of Act One.